today I'm speaking with He Ping Lei. She's the program lead for the chat at the Singapore Institute of Mental Health. Yi Ping, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Valerie. Thanks for having me. How about you start by telling us a little bit about your organization for the audience today? Chat is started in 2009, and currently our vision is to lead the transformation of mental health care and support for young people in Singapore. And one of our hallmark um, service would be a national assessment and outreach service for youth and young adults aged 16 to 30 years old so that they get timely and appropriate mental health support in their journey towards better health. I have to ask because it's a hot topic, mental health, especially since COVID. Has COVID changed the way you work in any way or has it increased the number of beneficiaries that you have? Definitely. With COVID, the challenges it brought us is in terms of how we can still um, provide that timely and appropriate care to our young people when physical meetups were not possible because of many safety measures being put in place. One of the blessings in disguise that COVID has brought um, it, is that it has brought to the attention of many this very important topic of mental health. There's been a lot more attention now and a lot of resources being pumped into the area of mental health in general and also specifically to youth mental health. You're mentioning young people and I've read some really amazing feedback and comments from some of them. How did that feel? Um, it's very touching and very heartwarming, to be honest, to hear those feedback. Um, to me and my team members, young people's positive feedback is a huge testament that our efforts are in the right direction because ultimately CHAT is a youth mental health service and we realized that in order for our service to be relevant to young people and to be youth friendly, professionals cannot be the only one to lead the direction. And so it's important that we hear young people's voice. We implement things that we hear are important to them and ultimately to get their feedback that what we've tried is in the right direction. How does it impact them, the work you do? I think a lot of young people are at a developmental phase where they want to make sense of what's going on. They want to look competent to others. And so there is that fear of being judged in a negative way, whether it's by their parents, friends, or perhaps some of the significant others in their lives. And because of this, they struggle with finding people they can trust to share or what's challenging for them. Um, and I think the work that we do allows them to feel safe to share without being judged. And at the end of the session, they didn't feel compelled to take up any resources or advice that we've given them. Um, instead, they were given time to maybe just step out of the session, go home, think about it. And when the time is right for them, they can contact us again to kickstart the next process, which might be to get professional help or maybe to get some other resources. That makes me think of the way you come across. And I'm thinking there seems to be a natural facilitative leadership style to you. How does that impact the way you lead? Thanks for noticing that, Valerie. <laughs> um, yeah, so in chat, my role is not just about leading the team. I am also a clinical worker doing the mental health assessment myself. I am a trainer and I train young people and social service agencies, professionals, to do mental health work and support. I think I really like the adult learning principles and a little bit of my own therapy background as well. There's this belief that people are competent, people want to be their best version, people want to contribute to their community, and people are capable of making wise decisions. And the idea of a growth mindset, that if we want to work on this complex issue, it's not about my idea or your idea, but it's about really listening to what each of us see from our own angles. 
and then trying to piece together a bigger image that makes sense for everyone. So I think because of the multiple hats that I wear and kind of alignment of values with every hat that I have to wear, it kind of then naturally, I, I think, brings out this leadership that you talk about, right? This leadership style that's kind of naturally facilitating in its way. You've just beautifully illustrated what facilitation is. <laughs> <laughs> if you look back at the project, what would you say was the value added of facilitation? For me, I feel the value of facilitation was that it enabled different voices of various team members, regardless of how many years they have been in a team. I think it, it allowed those voices to emerge. And it also allowed everyone who were in the process to really come together. And something else which I want to add on is that level of bonding that we all have at the end of the conversation. I mean, this is not like going on a trip together or playing a game, but it's interesting how just coming together, discussing serious things in a safe space, being respected for what each of us have to say, uh, what emerged is that that bond. <laughs> that I not just I'm not the only one who felt it, but even new members felt it and they express being thankful that they are part of the team. In terms of facilitation, what does the future hold now? The current youth mental health landscape that we experience is still changing quite a fair bit. Yet the clarity that we've achieved from the facilitation in terms of our vision for chat and the missions that we set out to do helps us stay grounded and serves as a very useful compass or a lighthouse that guides us towards the direction that we feel is important that we head towards. Wonderful. So thank you for that because it's quite beautiful to hear about. Thank you for your affirmation, Valerie. Thanks a lot for being with us today. <laughs>